Ooh, uh. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I love this one. Hey. This is scary. Hello, my name's Dan, aka Lucid. I'm a music producer and songwriter, and today I'm going to be discovering more hyperpop. The first video did really well, so here we go again. I've got a variety of hyperpop stuff to listen to, so let's go. So back in January, I did a little uh, new discovery for the channel and I did a, like a video that was all about discovering hyperpop music. I did a variety of different artists and I felt like I really did uh, discover something new. And I've since gone back and like done a bit more Charlie XCX if you've been following the channel. If this is like a brand new video you clicked on, then make sure to go back and watch those ones too because I go through like some of the like most famous hype pop songs. But then I've also reacted to Pop 2 by Charlie XCX and I reacted to her brand new album Crash as well. So yeah, if you want to check those out, then those are up loaded and but yeah today I'm going to be discovering more because in the comments for the first hyperpop video there were so many new recommendations and I thought this is a genre that needs to be dug into a bit more yeah let's do it again why not <laughs> um but yeah before we get started make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and also if you want to check out this video and all my videos completely ad free you can do by checking out my patreon via the link in the description you can also if you go for the weeping wendy tier you can actually watch my videos uncut as well so the full completely unfiltered reactions as well so yeah Oh yeah, and also make sure to like this video too if you like it. Cool. Okay, let's get onto this video. So I've got a bunch of different artists today. Some of the ones that I covered last time, but new songs and some new artists as well, including Slater, Caroline Polacek, Arka, Sophie, Dorian Electra, 100 Gex. Yeah, make sure to stick around until you hear your favourite. <laughs> last time I ended with Sophie, so this time I'm going to start with Sophie. <laughs> so the song number one is... Oh, let's actually put my headphones on, shall I? Bip. B-I-P-P. -P. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Bip by Sophie. Let's go. Ooh. Oh my god, I love the sounds. They're so like precise, aren't they? Oh my god. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> this is a lot less melodical than the material, isn't it? Sophie as a producer is just completely unique. Just making rhythm out of anything, you know, really. Sounds that kind of have like a sense of water to them, don't they? But it's not water. It's like, it sounds like it could be, but it's not. There's also like hardly any kind of actual musical material is there. Oh my God. If you let me. <laughs> it's difficult to stick along to. <laughs> this is the first time that actually something quite musical has actually come in, you know. This one really does show off, like, quite how unique Sophie can make sounds sound. <laughs> I wonder what it's about. I can make you feel better if you want me to. I wonder who she's singing to, maybe a friend or maybe her audience. Cool. Oh, it's not finished yet. <laughs> really cool. Like, the sounds are just like totally unlike anything I've ever heard. Even considering I've already listened to a bunch of hyperpop stuff in the previous video, like, the production here was just still so completely unique. Forensic. You know, that's that's the feeling. I feel like Sophie as a producer kind of has like this control over the sounds in her songs that is just so detailed and so, yeah, forensic. Every single moment is completely engineered and completely controlled. And there's something about that approach to music production that is kind of very atypical when it comes to a, like, you know, like the kind of history of music producers. I feel like a lot of music producers very much have this sense of trying to be cool. Do you know what I mean? And the kind of old rock style of cool is kind of like, oh yeah, just let it all hang out and then we'll just tie it all down and make sure it 
sounds all right. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's in its creativity, but it's in a very much more open-ended way. Whereas like Sophie's form of creativity is in this kind of forensic precision, which is, I think probably why her music stands out so much. It's just so awful, isn't it? That like, that she dies so young and that we won't ever get any more new music from her. I've thought about that, you know, quite a lot since listening to Immaterial, just kind of thinking, you know what, like, there isn't going to be any more stuff. Yeah, sad, isn't it? I can make you feel better if you let me is like the main hook. I think maybe she's singing to her, uh, to her audience. I think she's kind of saying, you know, I've found happiness and I've found something in myself. And actually, I'm going to put my music out. If you listen to this music, you can seek out somebody who's the same as you and you can feel better by listening to my music. It's very much she's kind of saying my music is a place of solace for people who need that, you know? Something we discussed in the previous hyperpop video is that like, it seems to be that hyperpop is a genre that, that is like home to a lot of people who are outcasts, you know? People who have been outcasted by their society, people who are, you know, LGBTQIA+. And I feel like in this song she's kind of saying you're all welcome here. That's the energy I get from it, that's what I take from it, you know. Let's go on to the next song. Let's go to a new artist, one that I haven't covered, that I didn't cover, cover in the previous video. This next artist is Aisha Erotica, and the song I have chosen is Iconic, because it seems to be very popular. <laughs> and Aisha Erotica was mentioned a lot in the previous video as a suggestion, so let's go. I'll be looking lovely in my sun Okay. I'm stressed. <laughs> I can't take it. It's just so like really in your face, isn't it? I like this section. It's very naughty, isn't it? This. What happened? Is is it still the same song? Oh no, it's that was it. Is it really supposed to be that short? Oh my god, it's literally a minute long. <laughs> Maybe I should look up another song because that was really short. I can't believe how short that was. Okay. Well, that was so short. I, I'm like, maybe that wasn't a song, but <laughs> it's complete chaos, this video. Um, <laughs> the next song on this EP was actually recommended to me as well. So I'll do that one too. So let's do Vacation Bible School and then I'll do my thoughts after that. You, like using the car locking thing as a as a rhythmic element. It's great fun. Okay, I'm much more into this. Fun. It's kind of got that bubblegum vibe to it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, fun. <sighs> She's jaded with love. Hey. This is fun, I love this actually. I definitely hearing the early noughties references here as well. This it's the sample, this bit reminds me of a different another song. Fun. But when? It's kind of cute and corny, isn't it? What a dick. What a dick. <laughs> Wait, I just looked at the lyrics then. <laughs> it's kind of reminiscing, I guess, at like maybe an early relationship she had. So she hasn't got over this guy. <laughs> Oh my god. I love this hook though, it's really fun, hey? Oh, I love that side chain thing. Back door. <laughs> Relatable content. <laughs> Bible score. Amen. Such fun. <laughs> oh, hello. My giddy aunt. Okay, Aisha Erotica, you are a crazy one. So the first one, it almost felt like kind of an intro track. I don't know, it was pretty nuts. Kind of those like fake orchestra hits were really intense. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. It was a lot. 
Um, and then uh, this one was a bit more my vibe, a bit more kind of like melodic, a bit more poppy, a bit more cutesy, a bit more bubbly. Yeah, I absolutely love the kind of dichotomy, right, between the cute, poppy, early noughties pop aesthetic and the lyrics, which are like filthy as <laughs> Like, there was a bit where it was what she was on her knees in a porta potty. <laughs> it's naughty. <laughs> okay, so I'm noticing lots of, uh, you know, naughty's references too in my gross Ugg boots. Oh my god. Lol. In your scene king suit. The coloured hair across your eye vibe is very much like a, like a reissuing of that kind of culture, isn't it, at the moment. She's very visceral in the way she paints a, paints a picture. But yeah, she's kind of like reminiscing about this guy that she had this like fling, this romance with, teenage romance baby. And how you're still the boy that I pick in a lineup of like 30 hot guys. And it's like, it's, I don't know, it's really, it's, it, it feels like a teenager's writing it. It's like really cutesy, but like so dirty at the same time. And I think that that kind of lines up with this whole day of it being the vacation bible school you know it's meant to be all like mm, i'm just a cute person but like it's like you know on the other side they're all fucking you know what i mean <laughs> very clever in the way that that's kind of reflected in the music and the lyrics and everything like, really cool i appreciate that a lot actually the way you look at me i, I, I can't help it let's go on to the next one okay so next i'm gonna go with caroline polacek so when i did my pop 2 reaction the song tears loved absolutely loved that song and and Caroline Polacek was the feature. When I actually went back through the comments, people had actually mentioned her, saying it was a little bit softer side of, but like people still considered her part of the genre. So I thought maybe I'd throw her in as a little bit of a, you know, a bit of colour, you know. So this is Caroline Polacek, and I'm going to be doing Ocean of Tears. Thank you for the suggestion. Mm, interesting sounds. Sounds like a kind of organy, vocodery thing. Still got the vocal kind of elements of hyperpop, hey? Cool. Interesting rhythm. It's a really weird sound right on the left. It kind of almost sounds like a screaming sound. Wow, very cool. I love that kind of vocal flourish there. Nice, beautiful. It's definitely a bit more laid back, but it has kind of like, yeah, the production has those hallmarks, doesn't it? Especially here, right? Ooh. Oh, textures. Can you hear that? It's like a crinkling sound. Love it. Ooh. That falsetto is so beautiful, I love it. Cool. It's very deep, isn't it? Yeah. Love it. Oh, the context of the chords coming in there is really satisfying too. She likes those kind of harsh noises, doesn't she? Fuck. Really catches you off guard as well, doesn't it? Because like a lot of it's quite smooth and then it's like, you know. Cool. Yeah, I really like that one actually. That one suits me a little bit more because it does have a bit more smoothness to it. And uh, like in terms of my own personal listening, like I like a bit more melody and a bit more like kind of legato ness. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that was nice. A lot of beauty in that, but certainly still had a lot of those hall those hyper pop hallmarks, especially in the production side of it. Really textural, really deep, really interesting to listen to. The kind of thing you could listen to a million times and still discover more sounds going on. There was like a bit in the middle eight where like there was kind of this texture going on underneath it's the kind of thing you can't really put your finger on but it kind of has gives it this kind of alien feeling but that combined with the slightly more kind of emotive storytelling was actually really beautiful and really moving actually yeah really cool very 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 cool okay let's come to the next one back in the first video i did 100 gex money machine as one of my reactions but there were so many good recommendations for 100 gex songs so i thought the next one i'd go and do was hand crushed by mallet so let's do that okay okay like this pad very dramatic kind of 80s
dynamics. They love really, really, really sharp dynamics, don't they, in hyperpop? That's like really what it's about, hey. Oh, I keep thinking it's gonna drop, but then it doesn't. <laughs> like anti-drop isn't it like oh my god amazing no idea what the lyrics are <laughs> it's like so sharp the way that they just take everything away there's like no reverb on it really is there i guess that's one of the another kind of production hallmark of hyperpop is it you know not using reverb if they don't have to <laughs> and then it just like completely is just like gone like <clears throat> the kind of sharp dry dynamics of it that are really kind of like so affecting it kind of makes you feel like you're being tugged along no idea what that one was about if i'm completely honest i feel like 100 gex there's a lot more going on than maybe in some of the other ones <laughs> i mean <laughs> okay there's a lot going on in all of them that's kind of the point <laughs> But yeah I, yeah, I feel like their focus really is on that kind of dynamic shift. Like it starts off, the, the song is kind of like building, 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 building. And then it kind of has this kind of fake drop, which is so clever because it's like still really satisfying. But like the actual like hook of it is so bare, which gives it such kind of sharp contrast. It's just, it's like totally fascinating to listen to. Again, the kind of stuff that I could listen to a million times and still not pick out everything that's going on, you know? It's like really anxious, this song, isn't it? Like, I'm looking at the lyrics and it's like, very much like sounds like somebody trapped in their room, not knowing what to do, just going in like an anxious spiral. I mean, I guess, I don't know whether it's, it's more about anxious feeling and representing that anxious feeling. Like as a listener of hyperpop viewers, what do you get from hyperpop music in terms of the anxiety? Like, what does that actually serve to you? Is there a sense of like compassion? Is there a sense of relatability? Um, I'd be really interested to, to know what you, what you really take from it. You know, I, this particular song, like, like it's fascinating to listen to, but I'm not sure whether I'd get something from it emotionally. You know, interesting. Let's go on to the next one. This is um, another suggestion from you guys. Hey, QT. Um, this one in particular was suggested because the production's by A.G. Cook. Apparently, alongside Sophie, A.G. was like one of the like kind of real hyperpop producer kind of founders in a way. Um, so I picked this one out specifically for that. So let's have a look. Hey, cutie! Ooh. Hello. We're getting a bit more of the kind of gross cuteness vibes. Fun. Very unique. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit like Alice Long You Girl, in that sense of like the kind of cuteness. Sounds like a love song, doesn't it? I feel your hands on my thigh every time you think of me. It's kind of ghosty. <laughs> this one's a little bit more stripped back in terms of its production, it's the... <laughs> I say that, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's less things. <laughs> yeah? Hey, cutie. It's cute. I love the rhythm of it. Makes you want to dance, doesn't it? Fun. Very catchy, this one. <laughs> Love that sound. <laughs> oh, there's the explosion, hey. Interesting way to end it. <laughs> So it sounds like a, that one's a little bit more of like a little cute little love song. A bit more, like a little bit more simplistic than some of the others actually. I'm really starting to get an idea of hyperpop, right? As like a kind of, this kind of broad sense. So like, so you've got like the vocal manipulation is a big part of it, right? And that one really had so much of that. You also have this like using like completely unique sounds and you also have this sense of it being really in your face. Then the other side is this cuteness as well. And that seems to be really prevalent in a lot of different hyper pop songs. And I think that like the dichotomy and the intersection between cuteness and like real harshness is where the interest lies, I think, with a lot of these hyper pop artists. As I mentioned, Alice Long Yuga had a similar vibe, you know, with the Harajuku song. Yeah. Yeah, building the picture. I'm getting it. I feel like I'm understanding. 
<laughs> Even though you're so far away. Hey, cutie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to the penultimate song. So another one of the biggest recommendations that I didn't do in the last video was Slater. Um, and one of the recommended songs that actually came up quite a few times was Troubled Paradise. So that's what we're doing. Let's go. Ooh, I love that sound. Very dreamy. Ooh. I love the snare, it's like, has that kind of click to it. It explodes out, you know, it's really cool. Nice, I like her voice. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay, I love this one, hey. Mmm, really, this chorus is so sick. Oof, love it. The filter here is so satisfying from that really kind of sub bass shit, you know. I love you till the end of time. Oh, love it. <laughs> I can imagine hearing this like in the club and just being like, Ooh, this is great. Production is just so well done. Like just how satisfying the sounds sound is just really great. Yeah, it's thick and full and sharp and powerful. It's like, mm, love it. <laughs> I love this. I reminisce at the days you were mine. Oh my God. Yeah, passionate. I can feel that emotion from her. Yeah, oh. Amazing. Oh, I love it. And the music video looks very Rain On Me vibes. <laughs> I loved that. That was really like, had a bit more of the pop feeling to it for me that I just absolutely loved it. I loved the rhythm of it. I loved like how powerful that kind of, that synth and that bass when that came in in the chorus. I just loved how striking it was you know really surprising because it was quite dreamlike before that you're know, quite ethereal quite kind of magical and then in comes this really harsh kind of thing to really disturb the paradise i guess that's the idea right the troubled paradise it's almost like that base represents the trouble invading the paradise you know let's have a little look at the look, look at the story it seems to be like yeah you were my remedy you were, you were like a fever dream yeah now we're enemies i still got the memories she can't forget the person that she was in love with it's so romantic you and me in the rain watching lightning strike oh i still don't want to let you go oh you left me here and now i'm all alone for heaven in your eyes Oh, blue green just like the skies, your love was my demise, travelled paradise. Oh, God, I love those lyrics. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wasn't expecting beautiful, love, like real passionate, heartbreaking lyrics hidden in the song, you know. Oh, there's something about being in the rain that really just, I mean, I'm a swifty heart. <laughs> my God, I love it. Oh, she told me to go and now I'm all alone. Oh my God. So someone's left her for somebody else. Yeah, and that's the thing. The paradise was their love. And then in came somebody else. Um, they split up and now, you know, that's the trouble that kind of invaded our paradise. And I felt like that was so distinctly shown in the music in the, in, in the way that the sub bass frequencies came in and ruined the paradise you know music production and storytelling like that is the dream you know i love 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 how you can tell a story using different frequencies you know I'm such a nerd <laughs> but that's like my whole vibe yeah i love that one it's my favorite one of, of the day i'm gonna add that to my favorites playlist i have like a current vibes playlist if you want to check out like the kind of music that i'm listening to at the moment um it's like a constantly evolving playlist so yeah if you wanted to follow it i'll leave the link in the description oh fuck that was so good. So, penultimate song. So I really loved the Dorian Electra stuff that I heard in the first video, and then I really loved Fembot as well from Charlie's Pop 2. So I was like, okay, more Dorian, we have to get back into this. Another one of my big suggestions for Dorian in the in the in the video comments was Ram It Down. So that's what we're gonna do. It's kind of a gothic sense to Dorian, isn't there? Whoa! It just keep <laughs> Oh, very cool. 
I'm gonna say Mega Death. <laughs> oh my god, I wasn't ready for that shit. It's very, yeah, very gothic. You can imagine this song being in like some kind of extra dimensional Van Helsing <laughs> movie or something. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Those sounds really freak me out. <laughs> Wow. It's like in section of hyper pop and metal, yeah. I guess. Ow. God, the sounds are so like, they make you almost like cruel, don't they? This is really stressful. <laughs> Just don't ram it down my throat. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stressful. Yeah, this is song has a lot more stress in it than their previous songs that I'd heard. <laughs> Creepy. Oh my god. This is scary. Oh my god, I'm so stressed out by that. <laughs> Why did you recommend that song to me? No one actually freaked me out. <laughs> like, fucking hell. Okay, so what I'd heard of Dorian before had been a little bit more poppy and a little bit less metal. Um, and a little bit less stressful. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> okay, gather thoughts. That was very, very intense. Really to the edge of, like, what, you know, is listenable, I think. Like, there's a lot of anger in that song, right? The angriest thing I've ever heard, I think. Like, really terrifying. I don't know, like, that kind of visceral emotion, although obviously very valid in terms of, like, listening to it in music. Like, I don't like it, <laughs> if I'm honest. I really appreciate Dorian as an artist. They're, like, obviously incredibly creative and obviously have really have something to say and I respect that so much but like oh my god like that was really upsetting <laughs> like yeah let's try and see what they're trying to say with the lyrics oh okay love who you want but just don't ram it down my throat so okay so I completely completely 100% relate to this story that's being told in this song you know this idea that like oh yeah you can do whatever you want but just don't ram, ram it down my throat like like what gay people on what LGBT people, what people are told all the time. It's like we're not ramming it down your throat, we're just existing. And it's kind of often used against LGBT people to kind of like shove them back into their box, to keep, try and keep their secrets behind closed doors, to belittle them, you know? Um, so I can understand the anger in that song and I can relate to it, but in terms of the actual music, it's not nice this in his ear. But I suppose that's, that's the point, hey? A lot to deal with. Oh God, okay. So let's go on to the next one. So before we go on to the final song, if you got this far and you haven't subscribed, then what are you doing? Click on the button, it's right there. I think, or well, it might be there. Whatever, wherever it is, click on it. And also make sure to check out my Patreon if you wanted to check out all my videos without any ads. Or if you wanted to check out my videos uncut, you can do that on my Patreon, so yes. Let's go on to the final song. I know a lot of you have been waiting for more Arca. <laughs> like, I got a lot of people asking for more Arca in the comments for the previous video, so I thought, you know, let's... We've got to smash another one in. So this is one of the biggest ones on Arca's YouTube page, so I thought I'd go with that one as a kind of... I think I need to, yeah, really get a sense of Arca as an artist. So this is Prada slash Rakata. So this is actually two songs, apparently. So I'm just going to play them through. Um, Prada and Rakata. I love this like almost like traditional Spanish rhythm mixed with this sense of the like reggaeton mixed with hyper pop. Mm. I love this one's a little bit more of a smooth vibe. This one's like even like a step away from hyper pop, isn't it? I think. But it's certainly under the umbrella, I'd say. Yeah, I'm not even sure if I'd even say that was... The genre is certainly starting to, uh, like, expand at this point, I think. 
But yeah, I know a lot of you were kind of saying, oh, Arca's not high pop, it's blah, blah, blah. But I think, you know, there are definitely still hallmarks. Anyway, yes, next one, Rakata. <laughs> I love the rhythm of this. It's like deep club vibes, isn't it? Ooh, very cool production here. Like the vocals are like hidden under this like textural distortion. Yeah, very clever. This one like definitely sticks to like the loop, doesn't it? I think that like a lot of the other more hyper hyper poppy songs definitely choose to like move between a lot of different places whereas this one just like seems to want to stick to its groove and I guess that's where it kind of differs and breaks free of kind of hyper pop vibes a bit you know the fire at the end I quite like that sample very unique <laughs> I like you have to let me know what your kind of opinions are in terms of like genre because like you can still tell there's a lot of hyper pop in it in the sense of like as I was saying like it uses a lot of the kind of uh the production elements of hyper pop the kind of surprising things like the vocal manipulation the distortion stuff like that but um it's definitely the one that strayed the furthest away from the stylings of what we've come to expect from hyperpop go ahead and argue in the comments whether it's technically hyperpop or not um feel free <laughs> cool i love discovering these new genres because it does like it gives me a window into like you know music that i wouldn't usually listen to and i feel like with this second outing into hyperpop it's just really fully formed like giving me like really kind of filled in the gaps and really kind of giving me a sense of like hyperpop as being this like genre that is now having inspiration in other areas like we were obviously saying with arca like is it technically hyperpop don't know yeah so so i feel i feel like it's filled in my understanding of the genre and um yeah, I'm glad that I've discovered a few more songs, especially Slater. I feel like that one's, that's like a hyper, hyper pop vibe that's a little bit more on my street. And uh, yeah, I'll be checking her out a bit more. Also, like, make sure to comment below if you want me to do any full album reactions for these artists. I'll be doing Sophie's Oil of uh, Oyster something, whatever that album's called. Um, I will be doing that one at some point, so make sure to subscribe and you'll see it when it comes out. Yeah, make sure to comment if you want me to do any other album reactions related to these artists too. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. Um, up on screen will be all of my Weeping Wendy patrons. Thank you so much for your support and for actually pledging to the second tier. I really do value each and every one of you who's chosen to support me, not only through patreon but also through the channel it's it's really wonderful how much you will watch my videos for so long um, and actually keep on coming back and it's it's wonderful so yeah extra thank you to those on patreon who are really supporting me and doing what i love to do thank you so much for tuning into this video i will see you soon for another one cool bye